about it. If, if you said a hundred years ago, if they say that's totally ridiculous, if you said a hundred years ago, more women would be wearing pants than dresses and skirts. The women would say, you're crazy. We're never going to dress like men. What's wrong with you? In America, not in Saudi Arabia, show me a picture of a single woman uh, in America a hundred years ago with pants on. Good luck. I'm not knocking on women that wear pants. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. How reason changes. How, how reason changes. What happened when they first introduced bikinis? They couldn't get women to wear. Because why? So I'm not going out in public in my underwear. So I said, oh, this is an underwear. This is swimwear. And so now, I mean, I told you I'm good on the men, you know, try to get this pick on the men. <laughs> if you try to have sell sell uh, hair care products to men 50 years ago, you had no market. There was no market. Men just got to put a bowl on his head and shaved everything under the bowl. <laughs> that was it. You can't get men, you know, in the mirror. <laughs> But the figure, you know, anyway, ration is fickle. That's the point. Ration is fickle. Revelation is consistent. Human beings are changeable and malleable. And so we change, we evolve. Allah Ta'ala is unchangeable. Can Allah wa la shay'a ma'ahu wa huwa al-an ala ma'alayhi kan. There was a law and nothing with him, and after things came into being, he is as now, as in relation to things, as he was then, before things. And it's from that source of unchangeable, pure, absolute truth that the revelation comes. And the believer who's in touch with that truth finds good in it. Qadu khayra. Those who do good in this world will have good. Ahsanu two realms to summarize. When the scholar said, Lilladina Ahsanu fi hadhi dunya, Ahsanu fi ibadati Allah wa Ahsanu fi wa ila ibadillah. Ahsanu fi ibadati Allah, they do good in their worship of Allah. So they pray their prayers. They fulfill their obligations. They try to adorn themselves with prophetic character. We are, we are, we are people who are the heirs of the heritage of the prophets in the world. That's an honor. If you don't think it's an honor, consider this. There are indeed a lot of Muslims on the, in the world. Between maybe 1.5 to 2 billion. But there's 7 billion people on earth. That means most people on earth are not Muslim. So Allah Ta'ala in choosing us for this path has honored us. Who is the Baqum? He has chosen you. ثم عرفنا الكتاب بأن الذي عباد الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا ثم عرفنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا then we get the scripture as an inheritance to those we chose from our servants ثم عرفنا الكتاب الذي اصطفينا من عبادنا we have been chosen to be the heirs of this scripture we've been chosen to be Muslims who is the Baqim? وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ هُوَ سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He, Ibrahim, who Allah has named you Muslims and chosen you to bear this name. He has chosen us 
to bear this name. He's chosen us to be the heirs of the scripture. We should take that seriously. We should see that as an honor. We shouldn't be wishy-washy about that. Mm, I don't know if I really want to be an heir of the scripture. You know, maybe someone else. You know, it's all good. Oh, Allah, that's an honor, brothers and sisters. To being good in our worship, being honored, we worship Allah like we're honored to worship Allah. Some of us know how deep that honor is. Because we were worshiping everything out there other than Allah. And Allah blessed us with His lamp. And He said, Alhamdulillah, I don't have to be what I'm not anymore. Mainly a dehumanized person. I can be human now. Islam gives us our humanity. There is no humanity divorced from Allah. There is no humanity divorced from Allah. We become beasts. Our Allah said, Bel hum We become more stray than the beast. Because at least they're checked by their instincts. And when we become beasts, we're unchecked. We're unchecked. We ride roughshod over each other. We murder indiscriminately. We kill indiscriminately. We exploit, we usurp with no limits or bounds. They worship Allah and they do good to the servants of Allah. That's our religion. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've only created the jinn and humans to worship me. And on the other hand, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرُ حُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ أَيْ لِخِدْمَةِ النَّاسِ You're the best people raised up to serve humanity. We bring those together, we're human. We serve worshiping Allah and serving our human beings. We're human. And that's good. That's good. You will find, where is the room? Where is the area for any bad to come into our life? If our life is combined, confined to worshiping Allah and serving other people. It's about conforming to the orders and the commandments that our Lord has given us to conform our lives to. That's what it's all about. And doing that consistently. Istaqam. Say I believe in Allah and then after a long time acting on the basis of that belief, you'll be upright. Thumma you feel that tarahi. It takes time. A long time, significant time. And then that istaqama comes. And the hereafter is better. If we do good in this world, we'll have good. We'll have peace of mind. We might not uh, necessarily have every material comfort and creature comfort, but we'll have peace of mind. And when you have peace of mind, you don't need creature comforts. <laughs> At the end of the day, what difference does it make if I sleep on silk lined covered mattresses or I sleep on the floor. Depending on the state of my back, it might be better sleeping on the floor. I just got the nice bed to look at. Check my nice bed out. <laughs> look like no one even sleeping. I know, I sleep on the floor. I got a bad back. That mattress kills my back every time I get on it. What difference does it make? We can live in a tent, we can live in a mansion. At the end of the day, we're living to keep the rain off us. Not that we should appreciate Allah's blessing. I'm just saying, essentially, if we have peace of mind, we don't need. Some people, Allah is blessed, and they, Allah loves to see the effect, effects of His blessing manifested by His servant. It's a good thing. But when we get down to the essentials, if we need that, to define ourselves, we don't have peace of mind. Even when we have the mansion, we don't have peace of mind. Because we go to the supermarket and we're ready to check out and we see the lives of the wealthy and famous, famous. And then we see LeBron James's mansion. He got a swimming pool in the living room. Now we don't like our house no more. <laughs> All 10,000 square feet of it. <clears throat> I should have a pool built in my living room. 
Now we messed up. So if we have peace of mind, we don't need the, the living room or the swimming pool. Because we, we have peace of mind. And that's the good in the world. But no matter how good we have it in the world, as we said, Zulid is not denying the world. Zulid is not having the world control one's heart. To have the world in your hand, you could be the biggest zahid. There's a, a famous story. A man was asked to take a message to uh, the man. I said, if you go into this city, bring the message to my, to, to my friend. He's a pious person. He's zahid. He has no connection with the world. He went to the city, asked, where's Fulan? That's like how you say John Doe and Arab. He said, where's Fulan? Oh, he said, the big mansion over there. That's his, that's his house. He said he's a pious person. So he went, he gave him the message, and he said, your friend said you're pious, and look at all this opulence. He said, the, the dunya is in my hand, it's not in my heart. In other words, you know, I got this, I enjoy it. If Allah took it away, I'd still be happy. That's Zuhud. The poorest person can be the first, furthest removed from Zuhud because they don't have anything but they're longing for. It's overwhelmed their heart. That's all they think about. Well, I wish I had that. I wish I had that. So Zuhud isn't possessing or lacking. It's the state of our hearts. That's what it is, the state of our hearts. But no matter what we have in this world, no matter how good we have it in this world, it's going to be incomparably better in the hereafter. The hereafter is going to be incomparably better. And that's what we're living for. We're living for something incomparably better than anything in this world. But it has a price. And that price isn't cheap. The Syrians, the Syrians in here. Syrians, they say, not biji balash. It doesn't come for, for nothing. Gilashe. Doesn't come like that. The dutab. It wants you to tire yourself out. It wants you to work. It wants you to sacrifice. Why? Then you appreciate it. The hereafter is infinitely better. Wala ni'amadahul muttaqeen. And what an excellent abode for the people of Taqwa. Why? Because to live the life of a muttaqi, it, take, it demands sacrifice. It demands effort. We mentioned all those things. Spending one's wealth, establishing one's prayer, uh, fulfilling one's covenant, having sound demand, uh, 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 being patient in the face of calamities. This, it takes work. And those who make that effort, when so many people aren't, shouldn't they have the most excellent home in the hereafter? Shouldn't they have the most excellent reward? Shouldn't that be their, their, their fate? And knowing that, that's what motivates us to do these things. And that's, that motivation leads us to increase our power. That I want that home. I want that home of the hereafter. I want that home of the hereafter. I want the good that Allah promises in this world. I want peace of mind. I want to be fulfilled. That a feeling of emptiness. People are unfulfilled. They're doing their work and still, you know, this isn't fulfilling. The believer says, hey, it allows me to eat from a halal source. It allows me to, to feed my family from a halal source. It allows me time to study my religion and to worship my Lord. And this is the best job you can have. All kinds of fulfillment. Driving that truck. Because the fulfillment doesn't come from the job. The fulfillment comes from what the job facilitates. And if the job facilitates the worship of 